when it comes to social anxiety and being, you know, a quiet person, trust me, you know, I can relate to you. I'm not some overconfident person who grew up confident their entire life and has no idea and can't relate at all to being the quiet person. I was that quiet person. When it comes to things like social anxiety, you know, being quiet and not speaking, you know, out loud, that pretty much described me. Not as much as, you know, I did in the past, but, you know, there's still days where I battle with my own social anxiety. And, you know, to give a little backdrop of my own personal you know, social anxiety stories, like, the reason why I grew up with social anxiety was because, you know, I was labeled as, you know, that quiet kid, you know, the kid that never spoke up, you know, the kid that people like, who's that guy, you know, he doesn't even speak. And I remember instances where, you know, a teacher was like, hey, why can't you be like Peter? He's so nice and quiet and he doesn't speak out and he just listens to the teacher. And another kid goes and raises his voice. That kid doesn't even talk. And the whole class starts laughing. Speaking up in class or, you know, talking to people or being able to look people in the eye. Because, you know, I didn't really understand what it meant to socialize. And when my, the few hours of the day when I did get to talk to people, specifically at school, that's when, you know, my heart would start racing. You know, I would be too worried about what other people would think. And, you know, I, I would get picked on. People didn't know who I was. I was labeled as the quiet kid. And people just saw me as an overall easy target. Like, I remember, like, specifically being scared to order food at a fast food restaurant because I would have to talk, yes talk, to the person in front of the cash register so I can order my food. So what I did when I was a kid was that I got my parents to order the food for me. And it wasn't until a lot later where I mustered up my own courage to be able to speak and order my own food. Yes, I know it sounds crazy, but that how, that was how bad my social anxiety was. I was scared to talk to people, and I just wanted to be at home all the time. Growing up within, you know, a low-income family, like, my parents were there not much of the time of my childhood. You know, I would go to school, and then I would go home, and then my parents would go to work. So literally, I would be, you know, in front of the TV from pretty much from 3 o'clock till 9. And that's when my parents would come home for five minutes, I would talk to them, I'd go to sleep. And pretty much the only time I actually got to socialize was at school. But I didn't really know how to socialize because a majority of my childhood, you know, was me in front of the TV and just watching TV. And, you know, that was cool and all. You know, I got to relate to shows like Dragon Ball Z, you know, Gundam Wing and all that. But I really didn't learn to talk and be outspoken and really be comfortable into my skin until, you know, a lot later on. How, how I got over my social anxiety? Well, the truth is, is that you don't necessarily ever get completely over anything, you know. As I get older, you know, I learn to manage it. I learn how to see how, you know, I am as a person and be able to, like, be able to push through. Even though, you know, a part of me is like, oh my god, don't do it. But it does get better. Trust me. And there's two pretty much main perspectives when it comes to, you know, having or getting over or even just being self-aware of your own social anxiety and being labeled as, you know, X, Y, and Z. Is that one, take initiative, right? You can be comfortable in your own skin and be comfortable as being labeled as the quiet kid or you can break out of that habit and, you know, slowly take the steps that you want so you can be yourself in any situation, doesn't matter if you're around people, X, Y, and Z, you're yourself 24-7. And if you actually want to learn to the nitty gritty of how I personally got over my, or how I deal with my social anxiety, you can click one of my old school videos up there or there in the card to see my struggles. And you know, that was my own two cents when it comes to my battles and you know why I deal with social anxiety and I'm here to have a pity party. I'm just here to relate to you and say that you know, you're not alone. I was, I still am that weird social awkward kid, but you know, I'm not afraid to speak up now and I can actually order food at a fast food restaurant now and any other restaurant and talk to inanimate objects without you know, being all afraid even though I still stutter x y blah 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 blah. And yeah, that's my two cents on social anxiety. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Those that I mean by this, I mean whether it's you're still in high school and it's you're talking 
you try to participate in class by raising your hand at least once a week make sure you talk on a regular basis my second tip is to really go at your own pace and